What up, though? It's DJ Smithsonian, and you're now tuning into the library. If this is your first time here, this is the space where we talk about hip hop's relationship with language, how hip hop creates its own language, and how hip hop manipulates current language. And I'm back with my boy Bosco, and uh, we're back with another top five. And if you, if this is not your first time here, you know that we sit here and just talk about like random top fives. And this top five is a little bit different because we're not talking about top five songs. We're not talking about top five MCs. It's sports season. This is this is probably the greatest time to be a sports fan. So like ESPN is definitely the hottest channel that's on in this house right now. And to to kind of go with the sports theme, we are gonna have a draft. What up though? This is the place where we talk about hip hop's relationship with language, top five vocal samples, how hip hop manipulates language, iconic bars from some of my favorite MCs that don't quite make sense right now, and even how hip hop creates its own language. I'm gonna give you a deconstructed hip hop lyric, and it's up to you to guess what the original bars are. It's DJ Smithsonian, and you're tuning in to the library. We're going to have a draft, and, and me and me and Bosco, we, we talk the rules, and the rules are three MCs, two producers, one album, and that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to talk about that, but before we even get into that, we're just going to talk about just like dope collaborations in general, not really a top five, but just kind of have a discussion on it and and talk about like why why things like posse cuts and you know collabo songs and all of that stuff is just good for the game so bosco man what's happening with you what's good player what's up man not much what's going on with you i'm over here not ready for the cold like it's already started so i'm i'm not ready for the snow like i'm over the snow shit. like i've been dealing Move with down my here. whole life it's time for it's time for a change but it is, it is. I gotta get away from this. I'm over it. Man, I'm still I'm still doing yard work. Like that's that's how warm it is here still. Like, Jesus Christ. I, I mean, I'd rather do yard work than shovel snow. I mean I don't have to yeah. shovel snow, but I don't want to drive in the snow either. So this, Yeah. Yeah, I'd it's a good it's a good trade off. Yeah, it's a good absolutely. it's a good trade off. And it's not like super hot like it was earlier this year where it was mm -hmm. I don't know like a hundred degrees damn near every day for like three months straight it's finally cooled down so it's just regular like we ain't got the heat on we ain't got the AC on we got windows open in the house it's beautiful it's, it's beautiful and that's that's how winter is here and then it'll get cold for like four days and be done but, but yeah man the, the art of collaboration man um posse cuts and and all that good stuff what makes a dope posse cut in your opinion in what do you opinion, need so obviously with posse cuts you already know pretty much the stars are established in the group like you know who the standouts are for the most part mm -hmm. but it's the guys in the background that come through and you kind of like what like you came through blazing just as good as the uh the star of the group and then that's usually about it for them for the most part, unless it's, you know, I guess you could say like a G unit S where everybody got an album. <laughs> yeah. And they're all and pretty much they're all good. Did Tony O'Hill come out with an album? I don't think he did. No, he did. It was uh what was it? Um Predicate Felon, something like that. Signs yeah. of a of a predicate felon. So Tony Yeo, let's see. Cause we got we got technology here. Yeah, I don't I don't remember Tony coming out with one. But Thoughts like, of a predicate felon. That was that was his album. Okay. Marvin. This nigga name is Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I would I wasn't ex I wasn't expecting it. Um. Yeah, he only had one album. Okay. He only, yeah, he only, he only had. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I uh 
think about with Poxy Cuts, just like the the background guy is actually coming through and spitting a hot six or a hot seven. It's kind of like, oh mm -hmm. man, okay, bet. Like they actually about that, <laughs> about it too. So that's kind of what I think about it. Especially like, obviously we got the big groups like Wu-Tang. So everybody on that motherfucker is rapping. Yeah. Just about. Oh yeah. So stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I'm thinking about, let's see, where's the, let me see if I can get the list. But the, um, the anthem. So Sway and Tech, they had that album with, with DJ Revolution. And like, I just remember the, uh, like the anthem. And it was just like all kinds of people just on it. So what I love mm. about the, what I love about a good posse cut a good collaboration is people that you would never think to hear on the same song together right. be on the same song. So like the anthem had everybody from like the RZA to KRS one to tech nine. Mm. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that I would hear KRS one and tech nine on the same track. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, and yeah. and just seeing like, oh man, both of them killed it. So like, hearing all those different styles was always dope to to, to see on some kind of collab track. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, absolutely. That definitely reminds me of uh, what was it? What's the name of that? Koch? Was Koch the one? That's... Yeah, yeah. Koch. I think it was. Yeah. Uh... I think it was Koch. That had like all the not necessarily they were underground, but like they always did something together with all the artists and always would come mm -hmm. out. So that's definitely something I remember about like the posse cuts. Like, oh yeah, I'm trying to remember who was. I think you might have mentioned like most definitely all those guys, but it was some other. People. Oh yeah, like Fairmont. I think it was on. Kyle. Oh yeah, the Ruckus, the Ruckus Records that's, crew. Yeah, Ruckus. Yeah, Ruckus. Yeah, Ruckus Records. Yeah, it was it was always dope. And he's like mm -hmm. you never knew you never knew who was gonna come through with the harder verse. Right. And like um I was thinking about and I don't wanna like and then sometimes you got like some standouts. So even though he's he's like we know him as a star now, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about like twenty four hours to live. Mm. And how DMX closed that motherfucker out. And I mean, this was like, this was early DMX. It was like everybody knew, everybody knew DMX was going in. But I mean, like, you ain't never really hear him, hear him on a track like that where, and when did this joint, when did this joint drop? I think it joint, I think it dropped before, um, it's dark and hell is hot. Cause it was on Mace's album, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was on Harlem World. It was '98, so it came. It was. It was kind of like the same around the same time of of Dark and Hell is Hot. Mm -hmm. Cause it's Dark and Hell is Hot. Let's see if we can find out when that dropped. Look like um, look like Twenty Four Hours to Live came out right before. DMX's singles and stuff for It's Dark and Hell is Hot came out. So, you know, that was kind of like the intro, the mainstream intro to DMX. And it was like, man, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> you know, who the, who, the, who the fuck is this guy? Because, I mean, you know, we knew Mace. We knew the locks. Because right. the locks were still, you know, they were on Bad Boy. They were good. They, and they shiny shoot suits on. Yep. Yep. You know, shout out, shout out to shiny suit locks. Um, like they still they still have some like dope dope tracks and stuff out of that and I mean you know Money Power Respect is still it's still an anthem yeah. let's, let's be serious so you know always always having fun with like those breakouts and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that like and and you know kind of DMX did the same I guess I don't know if he necessarily paid it forward um, because it was kind of the same people that was on the track, mm -hmm. but you know, bringing everybody back around for like niggas that started something, mm -hmm. that was dope. That was dope. It was like him in the locks. I think he still had Mace on there. Like, shut up, man. Mace was 
Mur- when Mace was murdered, like he, he wasn't really nothing to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> when Mace was murdered. Murder Mace is something else. Even now, shout out to Mace. Like he's doing big things with the uh, it is what it is. Him and Cam and it's that girl. Yeah, they're doing big things. So he's he's come a long way. Yeah. For sure. Definitely come a long way. And it's still part of everything just about so but yeah murder mace is something else mm-hmm. yeah murder murder mace wasn't uh wasn't nothing to mess with he wasn't nothing he wasn't nothing to mess with let's see what else what else we got what's another like dope dope collab song like, give me one give me one and i'm give me one and then i'm gonna give you one more and then we'll we'll start getting into this draft because I think that's gonna be like the meat of, meat and potatoes of the discussion. Mm-hmm. So, posse, honestly, probably one of the goaded is probably you know UGK and Outkast. I choose you. I think yeah. that was definitely like the goaded one, just because you never would have thought that you actually hear those those two groups together, and then for them to come on a song just like that. Yeah. Obviously, Dre kind of yeah. Stax just kind of killed the intro of it, and it was kind of like I don't want to listen to the rest of it, but everybody was spitting on it. So, and actually, like if you if you think about that, if you think about the mm-hmm. players' anthem, it's mm-hmm. really a, we got a third group to incorporate in there because that's a three six beat. Mm, like, that's that's a that's a three six beat, and and it originally was a Project Pat song. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And that pro- so like it was it was a Project Pat song. It was just like a song on one of his albums. Like it wasn't a mm-hmm. single. It was just there. And um, yeah, I, I guess uh, three six they gave the beat to UGK, mm-hmm. and then UGK took it and ran with it. And then Andre, there's this story on on the internet. I forget where I heard it from, but it was talking about how like Pimp C was pissed off. Because Three Stacks took the drums out of the beat for his verse when he recorded it, mm. and Pimp C was not feeling it when he heard when he heard the track back. But they really? they let it ride, and it turned out to be like one of the most iconic verses really? yeah. of all time. Like nigga, like I got I got that record hanging up on the wall in my kitchen. I got like a Texas edition <laughs> where it's shaped like the state of Texas. And I literally only played that record one time. And um, I think it, it was either, I think it was the day, the day we got married. Like my wife mm-hmm. and I got married. Like I took it out the wrapper, I played it once and then I put it back in there and it's hung up on the wall. And just as a DJ, you know how many times that I, I play this song? Oh. Yeah, it's a lot. Like it, it's Too constant. It, it's yeah. con- every every black wedding reception from Had like song the last fifteen years plays that damn song. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep it in the south, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in in the outcast family tree. Mm-hmm. Watch for the hook. Mm. And okay. we never heard from Cool Breezy. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I was so I was so excited like and I I've found like some other songs of his and I think I found like the album that that was off of on YouTube at some point but mm-hmm. I mean I was I was expecting him to just like take off after that shit mm-hmm. cuz of the track it was it was so dope and I mean you didn't really have a hook you just kind of had like the bridge of the beat um you know in between goody mob and outcast and then the video that mimicked uh reservoir dogs like this shit it was just crazy like it was it was an insane song and yet like we couldn't get more like they they made magic that one time like with all of them yet you know we didn't really hear from from cool breeze after that yeah i wonder I wonder what happened to him. Like he got a Wikipedia up. Yeah, he looked like he ain't active no more. Mm. Like he done. 
You know, you know who I found out was active um, in that camp? Slim Calhoun. Really? I found I found out he had been relatively active and had put out a couple um, put out a couple records, and I was listening to him, and they were okay. They they were okay. Like they weren't um, like one hundred percent. Like I need this in my library, but it was just a good thing to listen to that day. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm driving I'm driving into work. Like you know, hey, I found out Slim Calhoun is like actually making records. So like I drop off right. my dry cleaning and I get to listen to this man on the freeway. <laughs> um, but I didn't really bookmark a lot of it, so it is what it is. But man, we gonna manage the draft. Three MCs, two producers, one record, any order. So any order. So if you want to do your producer first, or if you do your MC first, you know whatever. We'll just we'll just play it by ear. And then, um, yeah, justification. So I think I was the last person to go first. I think I went first in the last episode. Yeah, I believe so. For the top five. So, so Bosco, I'm, I'm going to give it to you, man. Who is, who is your first in, in, in the dope, dopest album of all time in your mind? So you? I'm going to go producer first. I'm not going to go with the usual suspect. Um, I'm going to leave him out. We're going to see if he's if he gets picked up. If he does, cool. If he doesn't, I still might not pick him up. But I'm going to go with The Alchemist as my number one producer. Okay. That's, that's, that's how I'm going with my, my number one producer, The Alchemist. Okay. I, I definitely had that on my list. I had Al on my list. <laughs> like, fuck, man. Um... I mean, because he's just so good. Good. So good. So good. He can make an entire album. And that's all I was kind of looking for. Like, if I was going to pick a producer to make an album for me, picking particular artists that I would want, he'd be number one. Ooh, man. He he would be number one. So that's my number one is The Alchemist. All right. So since you got The Alchemist off the table, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for... You know, kind of similar vein. He he probably would be one of the usual suspects if we were having this conversation in high school. Um, he isn't as active now, but I would still want like I know he's active, but like we just don't hear from him like we hear from like the bigger, like the popular producers now because he don't really make that kind of stuff. But I'm going with high tech. Mm. I'm I'm, pu- I'm picking high tech. Mm, okay because like i i mean you know and you mentioned ruckus like i mean how many dope joints from ruckus like have we had and i mean even even he was he was kind of leading the way in the producer led albums Mm -hmm. you know where he made all the beats and just brings a bunch of mcs to rap on them i mean with the with the high technology series like he was one of the first people to really do that um like him and and timbaland with with tim's bio Mm -hmm. um but like nobody was really nobody was really looking at that as an option you know what i'm saying um and high tech and uh alchemist was was one of the ones in in that vein too because i mean he was he was doing some some of the uh like the rapper's best friends and you know some of that other stuff in the beginning too mm-hmm. but yeah high tech def all the way all the way gotcha good pick good good pick all right so it's back on me so <clears throat> looked at my list here so i can go with a producer or i can go with an artist I think my artists are gonna be there. I don't think they're gonna get scooped up. Maybe, possibly. But I'm gonna go on mm. a limb and get my producers out the way. Um, next producer, um, again, I'm, I'm not picking the elephant in the room. Like, I'm not gonna pick him. I'm gonna pick his nemesis, though, according to him. Ooh. I'm gonna go with Just Blaze Ooh. as my second producer to make this album record for me him and alchemist like just those two give me like a hot 
10 tracks, those are the two that I'm looking at. Mm. To do it for me. And I think yeah, they can play off each other pretty well because they both use samples just in different different veins. I think the last track that I heard Just Blaze do was off the I think it was Space Jam 2. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, Kurt Franklin and some one of the newer rappers. But that track was dope. Like he did oh, his thing yeah. with the track. Um I think I know so what you're talking about. He still got it. Yeah, he still got it. So I'm definitely, because he's one of my guys, so I'm definitely going to pick him. I'm going to go with Just Blaze. I think him and the Alchemist, they can, they can make a, a banger. Ooh, so I'm not going, I'm not going to pick that other producer because I know <laughs> who you're talking about. And I didn't have him, I didn't have him on my list, mostly because like he would just take over the whole project. Exactly. That's that's right. Like you take yeah. it over. Like we're trying to do a collaboration. And yeah. It's like, nah, I'm taking this over and I'm doing it my way. I'm not, gonna do, it's gonna be my that. dream. Yeah, I can't I can't have that. I'm trying to make magic. I can't I can't have him in there just destroying it. So, so no, now I'm that, not, yeah. Now I know my producer picks are safe. Um <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna go straight for the MCs and the first one that I'm choosing. It's Freddie Gibbs. I'm, I'm taking him. I'm taking him off the table. <laughs> I, I, I'm taking him. I should have did it. I should have did it. I was <laughs> thinking about it, and I was like, Nah, like he ain't gonna get Gibbs. Like Gibbs is good. Fuck my life. All right, but <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Look, I, I knew. I knew you had him on the. I knew you had him somewhere on the damn list. And I was like, let me let me get him. Let me get him now before before it's too late. I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, we've we've talked about his last product. We talked about Soul Soul separately. Like outside of the show. And and how we both kind of agree that given the trajectory that he was on, we expected more. Correct. But I mean, you know. We also, you know, expected more from other MCs, you know, as they were like halfway, midway through. So, mm -hmm. I think I think he'll be fine, just fine. Ooh, that, we that, just we just need so him. Bad. We just need him to leave, leave the the media takeout stuff mm -hmm. alone. Oh, um, just yeah, please, Jesus, please do, please do, man. That 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 hurt. That shot me in the heart. Ooh. <laughs> Oh wait, because this album was based around that man being oh. on it. He was. So I'm not gonna switch it up. We're gonna pivot. We can make this work. We can make this work. So my first artist was somebody who teamed with Gibbs. Um and I thought it was real dope. Um me personally, I like his other team members better but i feel just the way that i have this album going i think he'll be great for it and that'll be kiss so mm. jamie kiss will be my first artist uh, mm. for my draft so yeah i'm definitely okay. going with that okay i see you i see you. I, I see you i see you with jada kiss so yeah, that would that would already be nasty. That would mm -hmm. that's a that's a nasty lineup right there. That's I would I would buy this just off of that. Just <laughs> just knowing just noticing that I'm gonna get Jada Kiss with on a just blaze beat and an alchemist beat in one project. I would like you will take my fucking money. Um My neck my next MC, so um I gotta I gotta shout out the OGs. Like he is consistently just been putting out dope stuff and mm. and what really made me select him was the 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 50th anniversary freestyle he was on like a rooftop or something just rapping on the mic and i'm like damn it this man like he does no wrong in my book and that's ghostface ghostface mm. killer mm. okay like give me give me go give me ghostface killer Mm, okay, I can see it. 
I can see it. Like he's, right. I, I mean, he's he's got dope tracks. He's he's collaborated in the past. Um, he knows how to work with people with the Wu Tang. Like I just think you can't you can't go no wrong. Right. And I'm and obviously like I'm I'm going towards like you know like that '90s like '90s like cocaine music mm-hmm. <laughs> type of yeah yeah. Yep. Like this little, mm. I want 1990s cocaine bars. <laughs> That's gonna be the name of this out. Like, let me the name of this project. Okay. All right. So you got Ghostface, you got Gibbs. All right. And I got Kiss. So I'm looking at my list. I'm gonna. Ah man, like oh, I should have just picked Gibbs second. But anyway, um. <laughs> Wow. Um, so we're gonna pivot. So my next guy, he's been one of my guys since I heard him. Um I would say he's probably the second best out of that mm. label. Um but most commercial wise he wasn't, but he was he's second best. So my next guy, he just came out with an album last year. So my next guy, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with Soul, Absol, for the oh. second, the second MC, um, or for this uh, project. Okay, so, okay. So, so you got, so you got Absol over Schoolboy Q. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes. That's that's me personally. Okay, I okay. got Soul over Schoolboy Q. Schoolboy Q, I feel like has way more su- commercial success than Absol. Mm. Like he's more of the known name, I feel like. But if you like a hip hop head, you know who Soul is. You know the rap that when he's on it, it's he's gonna scorch earth. Yeah. So now I gotta now um, I gotta I gotta dig off into his catalog because I I I'm not giving it much mm-hmm. much of an ear. And to be fair, like I haven't really given much of TDE an ear. Yeah. Fair. Um, and I do know more about Q just because, like you say, he's the more of the commercial Special success of the group. Yeah, so it would be like you know Kendrick, obviously, and then after that, you know J Rock, verse of the, mm-hmm. the year <laughs> for Money Trees, and then after that it'd be it'd be Q, and Q was just it was kind of like Kendrick that was Kendrick's right hand man for a little bit, but Soul was kind of like I wouldn't say left in the dust, but he he was the wordsmith. You know, ah, okay, okay. You know, like no Lupe, like dumb it down. Like he ain't really dumbing it down. Like he's gonna have mm-hmm. quantum physics stuff in his rhyme. It's like if you ain't really listening to it, you ain't gonna get it. So you kind of like, eh, nah, no, nah, I'll just go to Schoolboy Q. So I'm gonna take Soul for my second artist. Ooh. All right, so I'm doing. I'm I'm going back to this like '90s cocaine. Mm-hmm. Bars, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna choose my final MC. Mm-hmm. Man, so I got three on my list. I got, mm-hmm. I got three. I got three on my list, and like it's, it's a tough choice because they can either go with somebody tried and true, mm-hmm. you know, from that era, or I can go with somebody who I think would do well. In that era's music, mm-hmm. man, this is tough. This is fucking tough. Cause both of them, are, both of them are on the floor. Um, damn, man, look, this, I need. The Jeopardy music or something, man. This shit, is, this shit is hard. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the newer artists. I'm gonna go, okay. I'm gonna go with the newer artists. So I'm gonna go with 38 Special. Mm. I'm okay. gonna throw, I'm gonna throw 38 Special here, cause okay, cause I think like one 38 Special has like dope bars. Mm-hmm. In 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 and of his his projects and like his work, but also when you know like I hear him on tracks with other people, um, 
like he he just supplements and outshines at times right so like you don't know if him or benny is gonna have the best verse when they on the song together right and and that's who I, that's who i'm choosing the the one who i was i was thinking about i was close to it and i almost did it especially because of the work that i've heard him do with ghostface so i know they will work well together mm -hmm. az oh oh okay az okay almost i almost one. almost used az that's a good one who apparently is also still making music and making like yep. dope shit mm-hmm Mm, that's a good one. Okay, I like that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. He is available. Uh -huh. What'd you say? I said he is available. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna roll with what you're working with, though. I don't know. See, that's the thing. Like, that's why that gives Pick hurt so bad. Cause that the, he would have been like the icing on the cake to this this record. Mm. And he's worked with he was worked with all of them. So I don't know who would just plays, but he worked with Soul and Kid. So I'm like, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna knock this shit out the park. Got snatched up. That was my fault. <laughs> it's a personal problem. So um I think this will work. It could definitely work. I think I feel like Blaze will have to make some magic on his end to kind of make mm -hmm. it work, but he'll make it work with this artist that I'm gonna pick. Um, again, he's worked with he's worked with Kiss. I don't know if we were with Soul, so I think he would probably be he'll start the he'll start it off. I will, I will have him go first on my record for this. Um, we're gonna go with uh, if you know you know himself, Push T. I'm gonna go with Push T as my last artist. As my last artist, and I will have him kind of go first. To be yeah, honest, yeah, yeah. Like I would have him go first to start it off, and then let those two guys at the end kind of carry me home. Um, he wasn't my first choice, but he, he'll make this record work. He'll make this, even if it was an album setting, he'll make the album work as well. I think Alchemist can give him some stuff. Just Blaze can give him some stuff, mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll definitely he won't let me down. He won't let me down. So I'll, I'll go with. I'll go with push. Oh yeah, push is push is gonna go crazy. He gonna he gonna yeah. go crazy. It's I don't know. Has he worked with Just Blaze? I don't think he's worked with Just Blaze. I think he might have worked with the Alchemist, but even if he doesn't, he has the flow to kind of go with anything that 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 the Alchemist will put out. So it'll work. Yeah, let me see. I'm I'm just looking to see if um. I mean, they've been together. Mm -hmm. The Concourse Project. I think that might have been a show. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, too. Concourse Project. That's about it. But that seems like it's more of a show, not a... Hmm. Yes, it'll be a first time for them both. I think it'll still be dope though. Like it'll still it'll still be dope. And let me see. So my my final one. I got a I got a producer. I got a producer left. Okay. And mostly because like I'm so like he he's had a lot of dope like orchestral sounding samples. Mm -hmm. Um, like you know, just kind of like string quartets and woodwind group type of deal and i think it would just be dope with this and i think i think he would compliment um i think i think he would compliment high tech well mm -hmm. and he's also from the midwest mm. i believe let me let me double check before i speak out of turn oh yeah yeah he a detroit nigga apollo brown Mm. Going with Apollo Brown. Okay. Okay. So what's the reason for that? Uh, just I, I like his I like his sound. 
I, yeah. I love I love his sound. I'm pretty sure he's he's produced something that one of them have been on. I know a lot of like because I, I I really started digging into a lot of the stuff that he's been doing for Stally lately. Mm-hmm. Um, who is another one that I thought about, but like I want I want '90s like real '90s Coke bars and. Mm. Like I don't know how well Stally would deliver. I think Stally would deliver right. on the project, but I don't think he would deliver on the subject matter. Right. Um, and I mean, you know, just some of his stuff, especially um, like I see Ghostface shining for sure. Um, I think Thirty Eight might be a little bit out of his, a little bit out of his element, but I think it would. I think it would be well. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it would go well. So that would be. That would round out this project. Um, okay. So I'm gonna give you. Cause I feel I feel a little bad. I feel a little bad. No, take don't it, feel bad. I'll take it's, it, Freddie, from you. It's the game. It's the game. <laughs> it's gonna it's, it's gonna game. work. Like it's it's the game. Like you can't you can't have them back. I'm like, not I, trading. That was more of a. <laughs> I ain't gonna say I was cocky about it, but I was definitely feeling myself. I was like, I'm gonna pick the Alchemist first. And then I'm not sure he might go for the just ways. I didn't know what kind of route he was going, so Man. I kind of I was like, no, let me just go pick just ways first. Like I think I can get Gibbs on the next go around, and that'll be no. Nah, look, I have oh, no, that's that's a personal problem. Like my so hammer, my heaters, my heaters were like Alchemist and high tech. Mm. Like they were okay. they were Alchemist, like because and and that's another reason why i chose apollo brown because like you know just like alchemist like apollo mm-hmm. brown's got bars too mm-hmm. so you know at any given point like like the alchemist can can come through with a 16 for you mm-hmm. and like round the track out right so now we just got to figure out how we can lobby to make this happen um I think we're we're at like thirteen hundred listeners an episode, so like all of you need to go like write the president <laughs> and say we need these collaborative projects to happen. And who knows? He might ask you like the president is going through some things right now. Like maybe he needs mm-hmm. a break. Maybe he needs to listen to some hip hop. I don't right. think there's a lot of hip hop being played in the White House right now. Probably. Not, and I though. and I for sure don't think we'll have any hip hop played in the White House next election I don't, I don't know i don't know nah. maybe some kanye but that's about it maybe yeah maybe some kanye. <laughs> maybe 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 some kanye and and kanye will just start listening to this and be like well i'm gonna make a better one than you guys and i'm gonna do it my way and it'll be like kanye with push nas um he'll well, squeeze beat, so i don't know if uh Oh yeah, they are, beef. And, they are beef. Kanye and Push is gonna come back like Voltron anytime soon. Yeah, so. Kid Cudi, he got like problems with Kid Cudi too. Like he did, he just yep. alienate his whole yep. like crew. Pretty much, yeah, he mm. ain't cool with Sean no more. I don't know if he's cool with Nas. He, he did that whole <laughs> that, that album for Nas, and it wasn't great yeah. at all. Um, but yeah, Push ain't fucking with him. Cuddy ain't fucking with him. I don't even know if Consequence is fucking with him. So I'm like, yeah, he just he out here doing his own thing. Yeah, that Nas, that Nas and, and Kanye album. I mean, it was it just was. Mm-hmm. It just was. And then, but but props to Nas for like coming out of that and then starting to work with um with Hit, Hit Boy. Boy. Yeah, Hit to Boy, just yeah. like just make heater after heater, heater after heater after heater yeah um between like the magic series and the king's disease series i mean it's mm-hmm. it's great and i wish um i wish andre 3000 felt the same way that nas does about <laughs> mcn i know i know andre 3000 doesn't doesn't feel like he could do it anymore mm-hmm. you know we got the flute album Shout I haven't out. listened to it yet, so so much. This, man, uh, well, I, I told you how I feel, and I'm I'm gonna kind of save my my comments to myself because it's like I'm a big three thousand three stacks fan, and, mm-hmm. and it's not necessarily a spicy take, but it's it's a thoughtful take, mm. and I think the spicy takes aren't thoughtful, right? 
you know. I agree. Because some, you know, like some people just don't want to hear instruments, right? And some people ain't used to instrumental music, and I think everybody just wants Andre 3000 to rap again. And my thing was right. like, did y'all really think he was gonna rap like this? And they gave gives us like one verse every eighteen months. Pretty much, yeah. Like it's he, not. I gave up on that a long time ago. So when he surprised mm-hmm. me with a verse, oh, fantastic, cool, it's great. I wish I could get more, but I'm not. I'm probably not. I believe I will believe he will have a rapping album the night when I see a wet bird fly at night. (laughs) R.I.P. John Witherspoon for that joke. (laughs) (laughs) He did that shit. He did that shit on the uh, on the ladies man movie. The ladies' man movie. Oh um, yeah, yeah. When Leon yeah, yeah. was getting ready to approach that girl, and he's like, "You ain't gonna take her home." I believe that the day I see a wet bird fly at night. I was like, "Man, this shit is this shit is great." Like I'm, like, look, man, like we damn near we damn. I can't wait until like the day after my 40th birthday. I'm pulling out all like the OG black guy quotes. Like every everything everything that comes out of my mouth is gonna sound like it's awful of like a black exploitation movie or something. You know. I can't I can't <laughs> wait. I'm just gonna confuse the hell out of people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did have something. So I know we're done with the draft, but I did mm-hmm. have a couple honorable mentions. Okay. Um, who you, who you got? As per usual, usually as we do. So I'm going to give you a producer and I'm going to give you an artist. Just two. So okay. for the producer, I'm going to give you Scott Storch for the producer. Mm. Scott Storch for the producer. Because he was making stuff and they were bangers. And obviously he got the legal trouble and all the other stuff. But um, Scott Storch. And then this one, I didn't know. You mentioned uh, Apollo Brown. I knew who Apollo Brown was. But the guy I want to mention actually worked with Apollo Brown on a couple of tracks. That would be Odyssey. Ooh. Odyssey. So I, I definitely think, if depending on if I was kind of going in that direction, I would definitely pick up like, Scott Storch and Odyssey and see what they can do with the album that I would try to make. Let's see, man. Um, for like honorable mentions, uh, mm-hmm. producer Havoc. I'm gonna go with mm. Havoc. Okay. I'm gonna I'm go with Havoc. Another another one that's kind of been out here working. You know, just kind of silently working. Mm-hmm. Like he's all he's around and we don't know right. until like, you know, maybe we hear a sound or something from him. Right. Um and I can't remember I know he had a recent project. Um I forgot who he had MC in. Let me see if I can look this up real quick. Cause he had um let's see. Yeah, so he had um he had like he had like a run in 2021 that was really okay. insane. So like he did an album with Dark Low. He okay. did an album with Nice the Future, and that's the one that I remember. Um, and then he did an album with Styles P. Mm. And I was like. So I'm looking at this up now on like Wikipedia. So now I got to pull out the Styles P album, and you know I'm kind of kicking myself for not having him, not having Styles on like my list in the in the back. Um, he was on my list, but just what I was going for, I felt yeah. this would have been the better, the better of the two for this. So, yeah, and but he and was my, there. He was there. That's my guy. So. And my honorable mention, as far as like, you know, if we're going to do like 90s Coke bars. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go Boldy James. Mm. 
I'm gonna go bold. I'm gonna go and Boldy that, James. And that definitely would have worked with the Alchemist as well. That definitely would have worked because they made an album together. An album. Was yeah, great. man, them so. tech, them Tecmo Bowl albums, man. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't get, I can't get mad at at the Alchemist, man. Like, I just want to hear more. Right. I just want to hear more and more. So I think that's it. That's. I think I might base some DJ mixes off of these lists, man. Cause mm, like this okay. shit, this shit would be hot. Like yeah. we would, we would think it would be hot. Like it wouldn't necessarily be, you know, on the radio. Mm, but fuck no, the radio. No. Right. We don't, we don't care about the radio anymore. It's the same. It's the same fifteen songs. It, it's just the same fifteen songs. Like when I was in Detroit, it was the same songs that I hear here in Houston. I think the only difference wow. is that like they play more uh they play more megan down here and then they play more mm-hmm. sada baby in detroit like you know because you got the one standout you know artist um mm-hmm. that they're definitely going to give more love to but still has like that national recognition right mm-hmm. um but yeah i might i might do some mixes that might be that might be a season three thing shout out to our sponsors um the appraised the phrase show they are um they actually just wrapped up a live event in november that was pretty dope um so they're gonna be having bigger and bigger things coming um coming in 2024 new phrases new guests you know new collaborations they're doing some crazy stuff with you know youth programs and things so shout out to atp and everything that they got going on and then also shout out our the sponsor rap geo the hip hop map project um where where we talk hip hop and geography and all kinds of maps and stuff are getting put out and you know I'm the one who makes the maps and one of these days I might you know be at your kid's school talking to your social <laughs> studies teacher talking to the ge- geography teacher be like hey man like I got these maps bro I got these <laughs> maps but um yeah so we did the appraised of playlist where we did you know spotify playlist based on all of the phrases like all of the songs have the phrases they used in the lyrics so maybe we'll do something like that for the library and actually like throw some dj mixes or throw some spotify playlists up if if that's your style if that's your thing please you know like like and comment and subscribe and hit all the notification buttons and all of that stuff because that's how we know that this shit is hot and um right that's what it is but uh yeah hey bosco it's always a pleasure you know Absolutely. we knocked another one out but that's <laughs> it for the library um another episode peace out